thing. We've got about uh, nearly 5.1 billion hectares of agricultural land on this planet. Um, to to take the 100 thereabouts parts per million of carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere that's causing us the bother, um, we need to increase the soil carbon um, in those uh, in those in that area by 1.6 percent globally. Um, here in the US, that translates to about a 4.9, so 5 percent increase in soil carbon for America to. Um, if you like, um, take responsibility for its emissions for the last 50 years. So if American farmers across the board increase their soil carbon in one foot by one by um, about 5% from what it is now, you know, it might be 1.5 to 2%, up to 7, um, then that's going to have a pretty significant impact on the amount of um, carbon di dioxide in the atmosphere. If other countries took responsibility for what they had, they have emitted as well, well that would be a great thing. What does that mean to a farmer? What does carbon farming mean to a farmer? Well, too often I think um, carbon farming is associated with what I call money from thin air. It's too, too often associated with um, carbon trading. I think that that shouldn't be our priority. I often speak about this and say to people, look, until all of these mechanisms are sorted out um, and until we get a framework where farmers aren't going to be um, at the bottom of the barrel again as far as the dividends from all of this trading is concerned well then we shouldn't participate in it. Um, we should certainly monitor, we should go out and assess how much carbon we've got in our soils right now to establish what we've got a baseline we should follow practices that build the carbon in our soils because of all of the benefits that higher levels of carbon in our soils have. You know, there's, there's at least 19 or 20 different what we call ecosystem services that are performed by having increased levels or elevated levels of topsoil. So whether that's increased uh, water penetration, collection, har you know, harvesting, retention, also to um, better crop um, production, um, healthier plants, which means less pests, etc. Um, having a lot, you know, a lot the water that comes through our property actually being cleaned as opposed to being nutrified and um, polluted as happens with a lot of agricultural properties. So there's a lot of different reasons why, you know. Um, so farmers in my, in my belief um, just need to become soil farmers because it produces better crops. And I think as well if you sat people down and asked them why are they farmers, well, they actually probably like to do it because they like to produce, there's a big responsibility that comes with being a farmer that you're trying to produce food, right? Um, now clearly, if we're more of a carbon farmer, then that means that we've got biologically rich soils, deep topsoil. That therefore by default means that our food is going to have a much, the food that we produce, that we're doing on behalf of others, is going to have a much higher nutrient density, um, which means it's going to be a lot more nutritious. Um, therefore, um, we're going to be performing a much more valuable service as food, food producers. So, there's a lot of other reasons why, I mean, there's production reasons why people should become carbon farmers or soil farmers. Um, there's ecological um, reasons, there's planetary reasons, um, and potentially there's financial reasons if there's any trading framework. But, you know, we need to be very, very clear that just because there might be money coming out of thin air someday, that that shouldn't be the main reason why we are farming carbon. Um, we sh you know, this planet up until the industrial age of agriculture, all of the agricultural systems basically functioned from three main inputs. That was sunlight, 
air, which contains carbon dioxide and other lots and all the other elements, and water. Right, they're the only three inputs that agricultural systems actually need and have functioned perfectly well and have produced much more abundant systems than anybody in agriculture has ever produced at the same time as building soil. So we don't actually need all this stuff. Um, so we can, um, and there's, you know, you don't just take my word for it. There is a litany of examples now of farms around the world who are making very good money, who are living very good lifestyles, and their only inputs are sunlight, air, and water, and that's it. No fertilizer trucks coming in, no pesticides coming in, no e ecological inputs, you know, like ecological fertilizers, etc. That's it. You know, they're just working working their farms by using those three main inputs and the residue of that is building carbon in your soils through the agency of photosynthesis and the management of fertility happens through the management of livestock so that you get efficient nutrient cycling that's it that's how that's how nature works so that's how it works <laughs>